better assurance than a great big hunk of lead. If you don't respond to romance, Jack, you dead. When a chick is smiling at you, even though there's nothing said, if you stand there like a statue, Jack, you dead. You've been always kicking, but you stubbed your toes. When you ups and kicks the bucket, just like old man Mose. When you get no kicks from loving, and you blow your top instead, it's a fact that you ain't living. Jack, you dead. your head. Rigor mortis has got you daddy. Jack, you dead. What's the use of having muscles when your life hangs by a thread? If you ain't got no red car puzzle, Jack, you dead. If you can't get with them when the band comes on, if you just ain't got no rhythm, Man, you're really gone. Now you can't go any further when the news begin to spread. All the cats will holler, murder! Jack, you dead. When all the breath leaks out of you, all your friends gather around the bed and say, my goodness, don't he look fine? Mm, he looks so natural. <laughs> when that happens to you, daddy, Jack, you dead. Jordan, famous headliner, hospitalized with breakdown, may be out for a year, says his physician. Noted band leader forced to quit on advice of his physician, Dr. Brown. Overwork is given as a reason for Jordan's forced retirement. Miss Ray, Miss Ray, for the last time, why haven't you been able to get that long distance yes, call through? What's holding it up? Miss Ray, if you don't Here's get that call phone. through immediately, I'll... Mr. Morgan, pick up the phone. Hello. Hello. Dick Adams? Listen, Dick, what's this I hear about Lewis Jordan? You can't do this to me. I've got him booked for 10 weeks and I stand to lose 20. I don't care what the doctor says. If Jordan would stop playing so many benefits, he wouldn't have a breakdown. Now you listen to me. 
If I catch him playing even a benefit for anyone else and you cancel out my dates, I'll sue you for everything you've got. Miss Ray, Miss Ray! Bring me some aspirin. Hello, Mr. Jordan. Well, hello, Billy. You're quite a cowboy. You know any real cowboys, Mr. Jordan? Yes, Billy. I know uh, Wild Bill Elliott and Roy Rogers and Sunset Carson. Can you ride like Roy Rogers? No, Billy. I never even been on a horse. Never been on a horse? Well, you're a big movie star. Why can't you be a big star and never been on a horse? You see, Billy, I play the saxophone and sing. And that is, I never... Never been on a horse. I bet you can shoot either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Billy, your nurse is calling. It's time for you to get your medicine. Gee, Mr. Jordan, I want to be a cowboy when I grow up. That is, when I get well. And I thought you could tell me where I could go to learn to shoot and ride. Yes, Billy, I'll tell you what you do. You go along and be a good boy and take your medicine. I promise I'll find a place where you can learn to be a real cowboy. Gee, Mr. Jordan, you're a swell. And thanks a million. Now what am I going to do? Yes, isn't it too bad? There's no place like that for kids and others to go. There are thousands in hospitals all over the country who need to get out into the great outdoors to get well. You're right, Miss Betty. I never thought of it before. I guess I was too busy trying to be a success in my own profession. There's something should be done about it. There ought to be a place for the kids like that to go. Well, there's nothing we can do about it right now. And if you're going to get well, we better get in and get you your medicine. Hello, Bob. How are you feeling today? Well, it's better, Mr. Jordan, but I'd be a lot happier if I could get back to my horse and my milk wagon. Where are you lucky to have a horse and a job out in the sunshine? There's thousands who don't. Well, how's Cactus today? Well, if I felt any better, I'd be heading back to Atlanta and that fine, big, brown-eyed gal of mine. Man, they gotta hurry up and get me out of this place. Cause if I don't get back home soon, I know some of them cats gonna be trying to take my gal away from me. You'll do all right. You're looking better, Mr. Jordan. I wish I had a beautiful nurse like Miss Betty to help cure me. You're right, Officer Lee. This bed is better medicine than Dr. Bones could give you. Now you two quit kidding. I think you're both well enough to go home. And Officer Lee should be back on his beat according to his chart. Yes, I think I'll get back to Houston and see Roby and help straighten out those boys on West Dallas. Okay. Well, how's Pistol Pete's lunch wagon without Pistol Pete? Oh, my wife is keeping the business going all right, Mr. John, but I'd sure like to get back to help her out. Well, we hope it won't be long before you'll be up and out and around again. Take your medicine. Do I really have to take it? Don't you want to get well? Is this trip necessary? Oh, come on. That's fine. Now you rest and try to get a little nap before supper. <laughs> Oh, there really should be a place for those kids to go. There's millions of kids just like them. Need to get out in the sunshine, learn how to ride and shoot. They really should do something about that. There really should be a place for those kids. There really should be a place for those kids.
These old boots of mine maybe need a shine, but there's nothing wrong with that. I can ride on by with my head held high. Got a new 10 gallon hat. Though my pants are worn and my shirt is torn, I'll go right on standing pants. Feeling kind of gay for spent my pay on a new 10 gallon hat. Maybe I'm plumb loco, pressing up my cocoa when I need a shirt instead. Maybe I'm not clever, maybe I should never let a hat go to my head. But I'm glad I did, cause a brand new lid perks me up in nothing flat. How can I go wrong long as I belong to a new 10 gallon hat? H&H stands for health and happiness, Mr. Jordan. Health and happiness, two wonderful words. job for you running a great big ranch like this, Miss Betty. Since your father passed away, you seem to be getting further and further into debt. But it was my father's last wish that Bob and I keep the ranch going so that people could come here to get well, especially the children. But you don't charge the children and there aren't enough paying guests to cover your overhead. You see, Betty, the mortgage I gave your father on this place is due this week and my bank is pressing me for money. Now, if you'd consider my offer of marriage, Mr. I'm Morgan, I... I've told you I couldn't think of marrying someone I didn't love. Hello, Betty. Hello, Mr. Morgan. I just brought Tugon Jordan, his band, out on the stagecoach. He, I'll pick us up at the telegraph office. Arriving Friday with family, George M. Van Dom. Isn't that wonderful? Mr. Van Dom and his family will be here the day after tomorrow. Yeah, that's all very well. But how are you going to pay a band and you can't pay me my money? Well, you see, Mr. Morgan, we had to hire a band in order to keep the paying guests here. And when Mr. Van Dam arrives, I'm sure he'll make up the losses just like he did for Father. Mr. Van Dam loved this ranch ever since he regained his own health here. He said he'll help us keep it going at any cost. Well, I think you're both a couple of saps to be catering to a bunch of city dudes, but at your own funeral. Just remember this. I'm a practical businessman. And unless I get my money by Saturday, I'm going to foreclose on the mortgage. Say, I don't like his attitude, and I don't trust him either. Yeah, I'll be glad when we get him paid. 
Now listen. Don't burn the candle at both ends. No, no, don't burn the candle at both ends. You can't stay up all day and all night. You just can't do it. It just ain't right. So don't burn the candle at both ends. Now one woman is fine and two is enough. Three I'll allow, but four is too rough. Red heads are out, brunettes are no better. And stay away from them gals with pretty sweaters. Did you feel that prescription like the doctor said? Three times a day and eight hours in bed? Those rings under your eyes, look how they've grown. They're so big they got rings of their own. Too many cigarettes bring a big doctor bill. If women don't kill your nicotine will. So you better get some rest while you can. You can't argue with the undertaker, man. Don't burn the candle at both ends. No, no, don't burn the candle at both ends. Now, girls, if you really want my advice and you want a wedding with shoes and rice, don't burn the candle at both ends. When a guy takes you to dinner and gets real chummy, careful what you put in your tummy. Let him keep that seafood high on the shelf, and if you order oysters, don't make a pig of yourself. You go to bed at 5 and get up at 5.30, you'll look like gravel girty. And listen, housewives, if you lead a fast life, you'll wind up looking like John's other wife. That old man of yours won't make a buck, because when he has to lift that load in that truck with all that dissipation and coffee in his cup, believe me, sister, he can't get it up. So don't burn the candle at both ends. No, no, don't burn the candle at both ends. You living and loving much too fast. If you got a good thing, you better make it last. Don't burn the candle at both ends. Your body's like a car. Don't let it get weak. You better check that motor. See that that radiator don't leak. When it gets worn out, you won't be able to trade it. So every thousand miles lubricated. Because if you're not careful, I'll see trouble ahead. You wake up one day and find yourself dead. Don't burn the candle at both ends. No, no, don't burn the candle at both ends. You can't have your cake and still eat it. You can't have a candle and overheat it. So don't burn the candle at both ends. Now you better wear your rubbers in the rain and stay away from traps on the train. And eat an apple every day and be sure your blood pressure's okay. See your dentist twice a year and stay away from root beer. But then again, you might have bad luck and walk out in the street and get hit by a truck. So go on home and read the funny papers and cut out all those funny capers. And don't burn the candle at both ends. Ladies and gentlemen, my sister Betty and I are happy to see how you all are enjoying Tugon Jordan and his diving car hand. Now I want to make a special announcement. Saturday, Tugon and his boys will head a big jamboree show in the ranch bar. Now Tugon will do another one of his famous numbers. I went to the well to wash my toe. When I got back, my slick little chick was gone. I'm a little Joe who's feeling low. There's only one thing I'd like to know. Why in the world would my slick little chick leave home? She done flew the coop and gone. She left me all alone. Mm, I wish I knew why she left me here so lonely and blue. Chicky mo, chicky mo, crane and crow. I ain't going to the well no more. Hanging around till my sweet little chick comes home. It's a natural fact she left me holding my sack. I'll stay on the track till my chick gets back. Hanging around till my sweet little chick comes home. <laughs> you go out to dine I taught you what a steak was now you suddenly lost your mind that's why we can't agree yes that's why we can't agree if I don't see you no more baby that'll be way too soon for me Your clothes look like a 
a sifter. They had so many holes. I took you from the gutter, and everybody knows we can't agree. Yes, 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 we can't agree. There's a stop for a river, there's a halt for a train, there ain't nothing in existence, can't be stopped but the rain, that's why we can't agree, yes baby that's why we can't agree. This ought to kill two birds with one stone. Ah, Mr. George Van Dam, Van Dam Trust Bank, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Advise you cancel your visit to H&H &H Ranch. Authorities investigating strange epidemic. Signed, Health Commissioner, Dobie County. This ought to keep the Van Dam from coming. Yeah, and when there's no money to pay off, Two-Gun Jordan and his tin pan band will pull out, and the paying guests will pull right behind him. Then you can foreclose the mortgage before they know about it. Yeah, before they find out that we discovered oil on the property. So grab your horse, Cactus, and get that wire over to town. We've got the head Van Dam off. Right.
work, Bob. Thanks, Bob, Chris. that really was a great show. Thanks, Tugon. Can I take a ride yourself? No, I don't think I better do that. You know? Oh, come uh, on. Don't tell the horse you never know the difference. Oh, uh, come on, Tugon. Ride him. Lady, you got me wrong. I don't ride him. I play him. <laughs> You're not afraid, are you? No, I'm just careful. That's all. Just careful. Come on, ride him. You know, I shouldn't do oh, this, you know. This, this, this ain't the right thing to do, you know. He's done with a dead pig. No, my better judgment tell me I shouldn't do this, you know. This thing, huh? Yeah, Who? Now, do I have to take this out? Oh, no, no. Now, wait, no, wait a minute. I need my guns, though. Huh? I'll hold you down for you. Huh? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> What do you know? The Van Dam's wealthy banking family is spending their vacation at the seashore this year instead of the H and H Ranch, which is their usual custom, much to everyone's surprise. <laughs> Look like a little scheme work, eh, Mac? Yeah. And I'm gonna get right over to the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> You're much too fat and that's that. You're much too fat and that's that. We're gonna walk if you don't cut out all those chocolate balls. You're much too fat and that's that. You're much too fat and that's that. I'm gonna go where my dough don't go just to make you grow. You better lose it, you can't use it. All that fat you got on that frame. You better choose right a thing to lose in the night on that the blame. You're much too fat, that that. You're much too fat, that that. You hear me say I'm on my way, and that's your bad to me. Yes, you're much too large, you're like a barge. You ain't so great with all that great. You're so fat, and baby, that that. Bob, I'm worried. I just can't understand why we haven't heard from Mr. Van Zandt. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Betty. But he was due to arrive this morning, and I'm sure he would have wired us if he was going to be late. No, no, stop worrying, sis. <laughs> I don't think you'll be so happy when you see this. Oh, no, it can't be. All right now, Mr. Mac Morgan, get out. <laughs> well, if I don't get my money by tomorrow night, I'll be telling you to get out. 
I said get out. Okay, cowboy, you've got the drop on me. But just remember this. If I don't get my money by tomorrow night, I'm taking over this ranch. Oh, Bob, what are we going to do now? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, sis. First thing we have to do is tell Jordan we can't pay him. Two gun. Come here. Well, folks, you're looking awful sad. We have bad news, Mrs. Jordan. We just learned that our wealthiest patron, Mr. Van Dam, and his family will not come in tomorrow, and we won't have enough money to pay off. Mr. Bob and Miss Betty, don't worry about a thing. We're having such a wonderful time, we'll be glad to stay on and play for you for nothing. But you see, that isn't all. Mr. Mac Morgan holds a mortgage on the property, and if we don't meet his payment by tomorrow night, he'll foreclose, and we lose the ranch. So that's the deal, eh? What a dirty Mac Morgan. Don't worry about a thing. I'll wire all the stars of stage, screen, and radio, and we'll fix up everything. I'll tell you what you do, Bob. You all have done such a marvelous job keeping the ranch together so people could come out here and have to get their health back until I tell you what you do. Hitch up the trotters to the buckboard and drill me into town this PM, and we'll pick up on the right dough. Why, that dirty Mac Morgan. I'll show him a thing or two. Mr. Jordan, you're wonderful. <laughs> That dirty Mac Morgan. I'll show him a thing or two. Hey, Bob. I heard what you just said. So I'm a dirty so and so, huh? So you're gonna show me a thing or two, huh? Well, listen to me, Tenderfoot. I don't like anybody that gets in my way, see? If you want to keep your health, you'll pack your tin horn and get out of here pronto. Mr. Two-Gun Jordan. <laughs> Mr. Two-Gun Jordan, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Mr. Two Gun, I'm going over for a little shooting practice. Want to come along? Well, I think I could stand a little practice on this thing. It might come in handy. What do you think of this, Mr. Two God? Well, sample oil deposit, location, H and H Ranch, date, February the 6th, 48, registered the same, Doby County Clerk's Office. Ah, huh. no wonder Mac Morgan wanted to take the ranch away from Miss Bed and Bob. Now listen, Billy, don't you tell a soul about this, and we'll check on it this afternoon. Ah, maybe we still have some good news for the folks tomorrow at the Jamboree. Put it there!
Hey, Mike, that Van Guy Jordan found the oil samples we had hidden. He knows there's oil on this property. No way. Yeah. He and the kid went over on the shooting range. Jordan missed the target and hit the oil bottle we had hidden. What are we going to do, Mac? Well, get Pistol Pete. We've got to work fast. For what? We're going after a horse thief. A what? Yeah. A horse thief called Two-Gun Jordan. I've got the evidence right here. Oh, yeah. I get it. A horse thief called Two-Gun Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> summer, New York in the fall, Detroit in the winter, didn't prove a thing at all, I got those Roman blues, yes, I got those Roman blues, can't find no place to settle, so I got those Roman blues. Join the club in old St. Louis, that G.I. Free Loot Club. Stood in line so long, man, wore my legs down to a nub. I hit the road again. Yes, I hit the road again. Can't find no place to settle, so I hit the road again. made it, Jack, in good old Albuquerque. You know I was on the wrong track. You know they tried to make me work. I hit the road right quick. Yes, that judge was much too slick. Uh -uh. That ain't no place to settle. So I hit the road right quick. was the next stop that fast town left me weak the dice 
wise man made 12 passes. I was up the well, known creek. Those gamblers put me down. I had to walk right out of town. Uh-huh. That ain't no place to settle. I had to walk right out of town. Ah, but I found the greatest town of all. Frantic Frisco. Got me a gal with plenty gold. And she just won't let me go. I think I found the place. Yes, I got my boots all laced. Got me a home, don't have to roam. Good news, I lost those Roman blues. Okay, Mac, we planned a horse. Good. Oiga, mulata. Yeah, papa. Comes the sheriff now. Come 
I'm glad you got here, Sheriff. Look out! you arrest two gun Jordan on the charge of horse stealing. That's right. You're nothing but a common horse thief. And we thought you were such a great man, Mr. Two Gun Jordan. Just a minute, Chef. Hold everything. Hold it, Chef. I charge Morgan and his man with a fraud, and I have little Billy out here to prove it.
See how soon I can arrange it. Operator, get me Dick Adams at Republic 4173. 
Billy, you're going to be one of the first of thousands of kids to go to my H and H ranch. You know what H and H stands for, don't you? Huh? Health and happiness. Or is that you, Dick? Dick, I want you to wire all the stars of the radio stage and screen and invite them to the opening of my H and H ranch in Lookout, Arizona. Yes? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a place where all the children can come and learn to be cowboys and cowgirls and get well at the same time. Uh-huh. Yes, that's right. H and H stands for health and happiness. Okay, Dick. Mr. Jordan, I heard what you just said, and I think it's wonderful. And if you don't mind, I think I'm going to. Look out, Santa, look out! 